So I was reading in my Bible today from the book of Daniel, chapter 2. The context is King Nebuchadnezzar has his dream of a multi-material statue that represents the coming empire's rise and fall. And his King Nebuchadnezzar's wise men and magicians and such couldn't interpret the dream, and so he was going to have them all executed. And word got to Daniel, and he sent word back to the king saying, hey, I can do this. And then his first action was, in verses 17 and 18, and I'm just going to paraphrase. And he went home and told his friends, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, that they might request compassion from God concerning this mystery, King Nebuchadnezzar's dream, so that they would be able to figure it out that Daniel, his friends, and the wise men of Babylon would not die. And it got me thinking about his immediate reaction to a challenge, to a threat, was to turn to his brothers, his friends, his, his team, his guys. This same idea is stated much more bluntly in Ecclesiastes 4, verses 9 through 12. And again, I'm paraphrasing. Two are better than one, for they can share their burdens and their workload. And when one falls, the other can pick them up. They're able to keep each other safe and warm and provide for each other and are stronger together in battle as a group. A cord of three strands is not easily broken, as the saying goes from that passage. We then fast forward to the New Testament in Matthew 18 from the words of Christ. And there's a lot to the context here. But he jumps off to the point where I want to get by speaking in um, verse 16 about the legal principle from the Old Testament that for there to be a legitimate legal case that it would have to be witnessed, the criminal act needs to have witnesses of two or more. And so going forward with that, Christ said, um, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed on heaven. And again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as to any concerning anything that they ask, it shall be done for them by my Father which is in heaven. For wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So, operating on the same principle of coming together, we see that it's not merely that we as humans in this physical, material world can pool our resources, can um, bear one another up emotionally and mentally and physically. But that through the new covenant, through the, our access to the Holy Spirit, we are promised additional power when we come together in agreement and choose to act together in concert for a goal. So whether we're talking about something big, you know, on the political scene or our church scene or your community, or whether this is a personal struggle when you're trying to overcome a habit or an addiction or maybe it's financial trouble, relational trouble, or emergency, or just a lot of difficult circumstances, something that is, you know, um, more normal to life, such as a death in the family, illness, pregnancy, whatever, coming together at all levels of our being and our, show, our social dynamics empowers us. It, mag it doesn't just add together one and one to two. It magnifies and multiplies our abilities to handle these situations, to face off a threat or an enemy or a danger. Similarly, in the 12-step programs, Step one says, we admitted we were powerless, that our lives had become unmanageable. We as an individual are very finite. We are very limited. 
And while as men, we are encouraged in some degree required to be able to stand on our own two feet, this becomes overemphasized by libertine, libertine humanist philosophy and some of the American machoism. And while there is a very real point in that as a man you need to be able to stand on your own two feet that is correct oftentimes that standing on your own two feet is those first few steps you make when you decide you've had enough when you decide things have to change when you decide i have to do something about this and then you step forward humbly to get help you sacrifice your pride to get help, to do what it takes to meet this challenge, whether it's personal or your family or your community, whatever the situation may be. So even though you are getting help and getting the backup of other people, you were still had to stand up on your two, own two feet. So you are fulfilling both your role as a man and banding together as men, as family, as community, depending on, you know, what's warranted for the situation. Because as a men, we are, have a responsibility to recognize our own limits, to realize when something is too heavy, don't lift it and hurt your back and miss work and lose wages. Or do something stupid and get killed, leaving your wife and children unprovided for. Or do something stupid and blow your finances apart. Or get yourself in legal trouble. Or whatever the situation may be, we as men, while we are supposed to stand on our own two feet, we are also supposed to be mature and sensible and logic and recognize our limit and realize when we need to ask for help, when we need to reach out for our band of brothers. And, you know, this is, co this is set up structurally in the 12-step and other recovery-type programs in the sense that you are to have an accountability team. And I have many different videos on that subject and, and similar points on uh, my channel, so please check them out for more on that. But it's the same idea as we see here in Scripture, as we see a recovery program, as we see played out in team sports, in law enforcement, in the military, and how it breaks down into groups. It doesn't break it down to an individual. It always breaks down into groups. We can see this system, this concept, over and over and over again. And we can see that in some of these groupings, that you are come together for a certain purpose, for a cause, is where some of the most lifelong lasting relationships come out of. So this is played out for our species, and especially as men, in this way. You know, women have a similar, very similar dynamic, but it, it comes a little more natural to them. And we can see this truth borne out in every aspect of our life as individuals and as a group. And what, and sometimes there, there's been times where my wife has asked for help and all she really needed to know is that I was there. And literally, I have just sat there beside her while she dealt with something. That's all she needed. And sometimes that's all that is necessary in this case. Just to be there, to let your buddy talk. To just pour himself out. Maybe spitball a few things. Because knowing there's someone else there, that you're not alone, that someone has your back also empowers you as the individual and helps you go all the way to your full potential, 
helps break down either emotional or mental, sometimes physical uh, limits that we have artificially placed on ourselves or they've been placed on us by others. But when we find out someone believes in us, when someone else is in our corner, we can break these barriers down and live to our full potential so that we can overcome the challenges before us. So I hope this is encouraging and uplifting and help you realize that it is never a point of weakness to reach out for help, to band together with brothers. Carry on, men.